<clears throat> hey everybody, we're going to do a quick uh, cut to the heart of the matter review of graphing polar coordinates. Uh, before we do that though, I want just to review what we mean by rectangular coordinates and of course this is what you're most commonly used to doing where we go out a, a certain number of uh, units for our x direction and then we go up a certain number of units to get to our y position and together we find the location of a point in two dimensions with x comma y again out here x and up there y okay but in polar coordinates we don't do it that way we kind of reinvent the whole scene and we talk not about horizontal and vertical components but we talk about how far away you are from the origin that's called the radius to get to a certain spot but then also the angle at which you must aim to get there so this is the radius r and then the angle theta. So polar coordinates, it's all about r and theta. So again, it's an ordered pair, meaning the first number is going to be the distance from the origin, and the second number is going to be the counterclockwise rotation from the horizontal. Okay, so this is our horizontal axis. We always start there, and we're always rotating counterclockwise. Okay, there's common points between rectangular and polar. They both use uh, two numbers to get to the spot. They're, it's always the ordered pair that's important. 3, 4 is different than 4, 3. Just like 30, 30 is different depending on, um, or I should say maybe um, 3 and 30 is different than 30 and 3. Okay, very different coordination. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let me just do a couple of examples. Um, if that's our graph, and we've got 5, 30 to graph, we're going to go out one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll rotate this point up till we're at an angle of 30 degrees. So this point here is represented by five comma 30 degrees. Okay? This point here, and you can pause the camera and do it real quick, two, 270, that's going to be going out two and then rotating around 90, 180, and 270 to get to this point right here. Resist the temptation to think of it as anything other than a point in space. That's that point. Don't think of it as some sort of a sweeping or an angle or something like that. It's a simple point. Negative 345. Uh, the way I would prefer to have you guys do it is go positive 3, go 45, and then go the opposite direction. Whatever that is from the origin, go in the opposite direction so you're right here. So this is negative 3 and 45. Some people would prefer to have you go negative one, two, three, and then from there rotate 45 degrees. If that works for you, then you can do it that way. I like to think of it as always starting here and rotating and then going the exact opposite direction. You can also have examples where you're doing uh, three and negative 45 degrees, okay? And that's the same concept. Uh, except that we use the opposite direction for our angle rotation. So we go out one, two, three, and then we go down here, and this point is then negative three and 45 degrees. All right? Well, one of the important differences with polar is that you can get to the same point many different ways. In fact, every time you go around 360 degrees, you'll get to the same point. So five comma 30 is exactly the same as five comma 390 is exactly the same as 5 comma and 360 would be what 750 okay so we can find the same position with multiple pairs of coordinates we can't do that in rectangle rectangular format it's always 3 comma 4 is the same as 3 comma 4 there's nothing else that'll get you there the exact same way all right so you should know how to graph polar coordinates